wife was talking about me when I was home. What? She was like, you haven't done your praise. And middle front, I haven't seen you do it. And I don't know how long. Oh, we're going to have to talk about that, too. We're live. Hi, everybody. Come on in. Hello. Hello. Hi. So here's, okay, okay so Jeanette, I am, so guys, the first thing is, first of all, hey, everybody, what's going on? So first of all, I feel super short right now. <laughs> oh, sure. And I got a flat. She got a flat, y'all. And I have on shoes. Jeanette, how tall are you? 5'10". Oh, my God. Okay, so you're as tall as my daughter. No, yeah. Imani is 5'7". So um, she is, so she yeah, she got you beat. So listen, y'all. Come on in the room, tell everybody that. And so here's, here's what you need to know. Because we are on several different platforms, I can only see one at a time. Okay, so do not be alarmed at that when it says zero, because it's actually not. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, all right, all right. So guys, I'm getting ready to move everything out of the way. Welcome to What's for Brunch. It's your girl, Paulette. I am the owner and founder of Brownstone Worldwide, which houses KCCR Radio, the Brownstone Center. We also have um, KCCR, the app. You can go ahead and download the app if you would like, because today it is Sunday. And you know, on Sunday, we have broadcasting the Sunday brunch with me, your girl Paulette. But we also have our show, the, the video show that's called What's for Brunch? What are we making today? I've already made our brunch punch. It's already chilling in the refrigerator as we speak. And Ms. Jeanette Barnett from the Cultivated Seed is with us today. We're going to be talking about money. We yes. had a whole conversation when you came over yes, we did. about money, about the coins. We need to definitely, hey, y'all, come on in. Come on in. Listen, this is what I'm going to do. Um, we're starting to get some, hey, Timothy, how are you? You and your fiance looking all cute and stuff. I see y'all. Okay. So, um, listen, I'm going to move my computer out of the way. And we are making for today, we are making an apple, quote unquote, apple pie, but it's super, super easy. Um, what we're going to do is I've taken some canned apples and I have taken some um, apples that I had to cook, y'all. Check this out. So these are apples that I cut up, two apples. I put some, y'all ready for this? I use some of the brownstone blends, cinnamon, nutmeg, and sugar blend in our mixture here. And I've gone on ahead and cooked down the apples with real butter, grass-fed butter. So please remember that. Come on in the room. Go ahead and share this with everybody. Now, Jeanette, here's what we're getting ready to do. Can yes. you please open up? Y'all, she done washed her. She went to girl, y'all, she done went to bathroom, honey. She done washed wash her hands and everything. She ready, honey. I'm ready. Yes. So we're using a can of cooked apples in cinnamon to kind of match the cooked um, apples that I did. And we're just going to place this in our pie dish. Now, here's what I want y'all to know about this pie dish. Y'all, this is real ceramic. Y'all see that? Isn't that the cutest little thing? Y'all missed it because this is the last one from Brownstone Living in Essentials. I'm going to have to get some more. Here's what I need the folks to know. Guys, this is not a pie dough. This is biscuit dough. All I did was open it up. It's the jumbo biscuit dough flaky crust. All I did was open it up, press it with my hands, and I created a well for the apples to go into. And so all Jeanette is going to do is place the rest of these cooked apples, these are fried actually, with cinnamon onto the top, and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more of our brownstone blends on the top. So if you can do that, Miss Jeanette, I would appreciate it. Yes. So Jeanette, Yes. We've been talking about money today. Yes, we have. And I'm so glad that you are here because I need people to hear you talk about money, especially for black folks. Let's just keep it 100. We got to have this conversation. Right. And what the re okay, so the reason why we were having this conversation was because um, I'm going to get some more brownstone bling. Okay. And I'm going to sprinkle, sprinkle. So we've been having a conversation today about, look at that, Lord, that help me to wash out. Yes. And then all I'm going to do is to, oh, a quarter. I'm going to take this and we're going to spread this around. And I'm going to take a couple of extra pieces of butter. And I'm going to put this inside. Y'all, I didn't say margarine. I said butter. Don't use no margarine in your stuff. You're going to be mad at yourself. You hear? All right. So... The next um, thing that we're going to do is um, add some grass-fed butter. I have, I keep tons of this stuff, y'all, tons of it. And I actually use Kerrygold. Kerrygold, I swear by. Now, 
here's what I want y'all to know. Me and Miss Jeanette had a whole conversation today, y'all. And I want to share with you all what the conversation was. Pastor Michael Todd actually talked about this. And he actually shared with his congregation, we are tired of having GoFundMe parties for your burial, for your surgery, and all of that other stuff. Am I right? So here's the question that I have for you, because you're our money expert. Right. And, and Jeanette, one of the things that I want to certainly ask you is, first of all, tell us who you are. Okay. What you do. What's your background? How you became the money expert, girl? That's what I want to know while I make this pie. How you make this pie? Okay. Yes. So as she said, my name is Jeanette Barnett, and I own an organization. I'm the founder of The Cultivated Seed. And The Cultivated Seed is an organization for our culture and community that really teaches about finances, personal mm -hmm. finances. Okay. So my background is I have 15 years of banking and finance experience where I really studied how people utilize their money. So if you think about the bank account of someone that is robbing a Peter to pay Paul, uh -huh. and you think about the bank account of somebody that makes millions, mm -hmm. I've seen it all and really compared and contrast what people did well and how they were successful, mm -hmm. and then what really were the traits and habits of things um, where people did poorly when it came to money. Okay. In that, I became a certified financial coach where I really focused on the habits and behaviors of our culture and community and why we struggle so much when it comes to finances. And what'd you find out? So when you think about it, even right now, seven out of 10 people don't even have a thousand dollars saved up in their bank account. That's, That's an American story. Story. That's not even just our culture. Uh -huh. And that was also pre-pandemic and pre us getting to this point of where we're really heading down a road of finances really being more of a struggle mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things is our habits and behaviors. Okay. We don't stick to a budget. Mm -hmm. um, we live for today, mm -hmm. for the moment. Mm -hmm. We live above our means. Mm -hmm. We don't um, really keep a, a budget day to day to say, okay, I know what my bills are. Hey, y'all, come on in. I know what I can spend and I know what my income is. Okay. So if you're struggling in your finances, one or two things. You either have to reduce what you're paying. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. Or make more money. Okay. Okay. So one of the two. I don't have to give up Netflix. You don't. I don't have to give up my crab legs. You don't. Okay. So I just have to find more money. You have to find more money. Oh, child. And so what I do is I coach people. Then that was some people's biggest challenge is I have to give up cable. If you're spending three hundred dollars a month on cable. Um, oh, you in my business. You in my business. Oh my god. Okay with that, I'm not. I'm not fine. Okay. But what you could do is depending on your service provider as well, you can contact them. A lot of times they have deals. Okay. And you can contact them and say, Hey, you know, my bill is high. Do you have some other options. alternatives or some other options for me? Um, because I'm noticing I'm paying $300 a month. And oh my it's, just, it's just not affordable. Exactly. And you know, what's funny is it seemed like the bill go up every month, just like it Netflix. Does. Went up to nineteen dollars a it month. Is. What's happening? What's what's really going on? quickly? Supply and demand. Girl, people want Netflix, but people are also going away from regular cable. That's true. That's so. True. Although it's nineteen ninety nine, it's not that three hundred dollar bill, especially if you got Come sports, cat, cable channels, and yep. you got special HBO channels. Yep. You're paying more money for those. Right. Things. That's true. That's true. So all of it is around lifestyle, and okay. you can have the lifestyle that you want and that you need. If you can afford to pay three hundred dollars, great. But if you don't have that thousand dollars, basically that I'm talking about, right? Then do you need to pay three hundred dollars? No, ma'am, I don't. I need to take that three hundred dollars and I need to put it towards my thousand dollars a month. So let me ask you this to our audience, because I know this is something that I want to know. Would you say starting at a thousand dollars is the max, or can I just start anywhere? You can start anywhere. Okay. You can start. I would say if you don't have your savings set up and you don't have what you need, I say a thousand dollars because that's the basic upon an emergency. Okay. If, if you need a tire replaced, okay. if you have a situation or something that happens that's an emergency, mm -hmm. you have a thousand dollars to be able to cover that. Okay. If you don't, if you don't, then you're using your credit cards or you're going to get these payday loans Ooh, or you're overdrawing your account because you can't afford thousand dollars now right. ideally you want to save up three to four even six months worth of income okay um 
to have in a savings account. That's okay. that's because if anything happens, you know, you have that money put aside. Right. But I say a thousand dollars to start because that's your starting place to say I have that put to the side. Okay, me. got it, got it. And so, um, guys, just really quick, let me show you where we are with our pie. And again, so all I'm doing is like a, a a Frankenstein kind of deal. I didn't feel like I wanted to do just the standard uh, pie crust. I wanted some kind of chewiness. I wanted the the um, I wanted to have. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more of my. Um, is it cinnamon, going to be nutmeg. kind of flaky like the biscuit? It's going to be very flaky. Oh, That's okay. the reason why I chose the biscuit. Now, what I'm also going to do is once it's been in the oven for a while, it's going to bubble up. That's why I left a little hole there. And you'll notice there are little holes everywhere mm -hmm. so that some of that steam can kind of escape and kind of give it that bubbly crust that we really like. But then also I'm going to use an egg wash to give it some kind of a golden brown on the top as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. And then we're going to get started on our casserole, our sausage casserole. Super, super easy. Easy. I'm going to go ahead and y'all, we need to give her a name. Okay. Cause everything <laughs> in my house has a name. So my cutting board right here, this is Roger that my skillet, my favorite 10 inch skillet. That's Sally. Everybody knows that. Okay. So, so you're going to have a name for your pie. I'm going to have to find a name. I'm, I'm going to have to find a name for her. I don't know if her name will be red or what, but she's going to be <laughs> something. So let's finish talking about this. Cause this is serious business. So, right. We, we we talked about starting with an emergency fund. Right. And having an emergency fund is not the same as having a savings or checking. Is that right? No. Okay. Your savings account, you can put your $1,000 in your savings account, but it should be completely separate. It should be okay. stored for emergencies. Then you have your checking account that you pay your bills and you have it there. And then okay. the other thing that we were talking about that was really important is uh -huh. like life insurance. Oh. Um, Y'all listening sure. to this one? So life insurance is <laughs> ne a necessity. Yes. And I feel like in our culture and community, for some reasons, it's the one thing that we shy away from, we run away from, yep. because we don't want to think about death and we don't want to talk about money, right. especially when it comes to our families. Right. But you have to set your families up for the best case and position and life insurance is the way that you can do that. Okay. It helps alleviate a lot of the arguments when it comes time to bury your family member. It also sets you up to where you may be able to leave wealth after everything has happened. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have life insurance for your family. So I'm going to ask a question, and, and that's why you're the expert and I'm not in this, in this regard. So I'm curious. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing a lot more communication about you should have a trust. You need to do this. You need to do that. Are we gone past the days of having a living room where only the insurance man came to uh, collect his payment for the burial for the family? How do we handle that? What should we expect? Because one of the things that I realized just recently, without me going into detail, right. is we have a really hard time talking about illness. We have a really hard time talking about death and the cost of associated. There you go. We are long do. past the days where somebody just comes and rings your doorbell and say, hey, do you need this? And so you can find um, insurance agent. Um, I've done insurance in the past. Um, it isn't something that I do today, but you can find insurance agents and they can write um, policies for you, for your family, even for your kids, um, right. if anything was to happen to them. To your point, though, the underlying thing is that we don't talk about these things no, in our families. No. And I do think it's important for you to sit down and have those conversations, especially if you have elder parents, right. if you have sisters and brothers as mm -hmm. we all age, mm -hmm. it is necessary for you to sit down and have a conversation just in general about what's going to happen mm -hmm. or how do you want things to be taken care of. Right. Do you all have insurance? Who's the beneficiary of right. those policies? Do they know and have you had conversations with them to let them know that they're the beneficiaries or they're the ones that's going to be having those conversations with people? So I think it's important in general to your point of having those difficult conversations and that's what we're afraid of. So how do we get past that? That's my question. While I get you some eggs. I think it's, it's like anything else. You have to just sit down and have those conversations. If you have people that you know are challenged and they don't want to talk about these things, you just set up the meetings and say, hey, we need to talk about something important. Yeah. With, with my family in particular, 
we did like a group Zoom because we're in different states. Yeah. And I'm not going to say I, did, I told them what it was about, but I kind of was just like, hey, we need to have a family conversation. Okay. And then I went into it with, hey, we need to talk about these things. Do you have this? Do you have that? Is mm -hmm. everything covered? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just bringing, it has to be somebody that raises the hand or mm -hmm. raises, hey, awareness to the situation. Okay. We need to discuss this. Okay. And whoever that is, it doesn't matter. Like for your family, it could be you. Yeah. To say, hey, let's sit down, let's talk about this, let's have a conversation. And it's not going to be comfortable even for you. Yeah. But you know the benefits of it, especially given certain situations that you want to get in front of it mm -hmm. instead of waiting for something to happen and then you have to deal with the trauma. My God. And when, when I tell you, right now, Sally has sausage in her because what we're going to be doing is we are making a casserole of sorts. We ain't doing a whole bunch of cooking today, okay? Oh, this is amazing. Yes. So all we're going to do is we're going to ask Miss Jeanette if she would be so kind to as to eggs. crack about eight eggs. Eight, eight eggs. Eight, girl. We're going to okay. crack eight eggs. And while she cracks I eight you. eggs, I am going to do, I'm going to shred some potatoes. Okay. And you want me to put all eight of them in here, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then we're going to give you a whisk, girl. And you're going to put Not a whole whisk. Did you name the whisk, too? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not name the whisk, but there's the whisk. And I am going to be using Roger once again. And um, we are going to be using um, some potatoes. We just use some basic russet potatoes. Now, one of the things that I do that's a part of my show um, tips, topics, and talk, and also the day shift is um, I talk a lot about um, how to save money, how to do this, how to do that, so forth and so on. But I'm so glad that you're here today because at the end of the day, what we want to make sure that we do is to cover everything. I can teach you how um, I made a dollar hollow, which is one of my favorite phrases, right? You want to make sure that you are doing everything that you can. Guys, these are just some five pound, this came from a five, five pound bag of russet potatoes, right? And y'all know how I do. Every week I go grocery shopping and I buy about $180 worth of groceries for $10. I believe in making a dollar hot. Okay? Super important oh, for wow. us to do that. Now I um, need to learn that. $180 worth of groceries for $10.20. Oh, yes. yes okay, no. I need to take your class. <laughs> okay, because these, these grocery store prices are ridiculous. Who are you telling? And it's so crazy how expensive it's become it is. To, um, to even buy groceries. So when I find out little deals and stuff like that, hey, y'all, come on in. Um, I'm always willing to um, share that. So every week I go live mm -hmm. for six topics and talk. And I share what I have um, been able to um, get with my little my little money. Yeah, ten dollars, girl, please. Ten dollars. Yeah, ten dollars. Ten dollars and twenty-seven cents. Now, back to this situation at hand. Mm -hmm. Back to the situation at hand. So normally, y'all, let me tell you something. I don't shred often. I don't grate my potatoes often, but because there were no frozen hash browns in the, in the freezer at the grocery store around the corner from my house, I am shredding these potatoes. Let me tell you why, because we're going to make a casserole out of our potatoes and all out of our um, sausage and the egg, and we're going to put some cheese in there. We're going to make a quick casserole to go with that. Now, we were talking about, uh, hang on, add a little bit of the brownstone blend, everyday blend, if you don't mind. My hands is just a little wet. Okay. And you can just sprinkle that in there just a little bit. Now, one of the things that we were talking about was having that conversation. Right. So would you say for someone who is just now starting out, that it would be better to just have like a simple burial or just go all out and get everything that you need? I would say, you know, it's a memorial service. So you would definitely want to think about the person that you're honoring. Yep. And, you know, what would be best? Hey, y'all, come on in. Yeah. And considering, you know, 
the cost that's associated with that too. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a right or wrong way. Let me say that. Okay. I would say that you would be cautious because you, you know, especially depending on if they had insurance or they didn't have insurance. Okay. What the family's financial situation is, is always not going to be a right or wrong. Thing. Okay. Um, but definitely be cognizant of the cost of everything. And okay. it's important for the family to discuss what those things look like. Right. Um, that's the only way that it's going to work is if they have a conversation and they talk to each other mm -hmm. and they know, you know, because they have to work together. With it. Right. That's the hard part. And that's I think everybody's emotional. Um, it's a lot going on. And when you add the additional stress of money, oh, it makes it more complicated, gosh, yeah. which is why having insurance having kind of things set up helps alleviate at least that stress because right. you know that that's taken care of. Right. And, and that's the good thing. And, and I think you brought up a really good point earlier when we were having our conversation. Y'all come on in this room. We are talking about money today. Um, it's your girl Paulette and this is Jeanette Barnett. She is the founder of The Cultivated Seed, which helps you to learn more about how to cultivate your dollars and make them work for you. Honey, I got the expert in the kitchen with me today, honey. <laughs> and she is flipping these eggs. You hear me? So listen, um, we were talking about your money right. and burial. Right. Because we seem to get real nervous when folks die. Yep. I'm going to be honest with you. I already have things set up. I already know where I want certain things to go. If something were to happen to me right now today, my children would know what my instructions were. Right. Because I think that that would help alleviate some of the stressors and the emotion that goes behind burying a, a loved one. It does. When we are, because um, uh, that's a lot of stress. It is. Hi, Virginia. How are you? Come on in. Yep. So we are, I think, I think we need to really, really be careful when we are talking about these things. But we also need to take the time to have the conversation with our kids and with our loved ones. Because what if something does happen? Okay, so I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking this. My children will bury me. All of my children will bury me. Okay? So what that means is, is my kids have got to hear what their mom has to say. Let's sit down. Let's have this conversation. What would be the best thing to do? Because I know that there's cremation, there's burial. Let's put everybody in the same plot. X, Y, Z. Right. I would say, again, you have to know the individuals that you're burying and right. really know a lot of their wishes. I have, um, I the way I have my stuff set up is I have all, a last will and testament. Okay. And so it speaks to that. It Hi, says, Stacey. It says, you know, yeah. I want to be cremated. Okay. It says I don't want to be resuscitated. Yeah. It says, you know, if I'm if I'm not able to make decisions, what the decision is, so it takes that burden off of my family. Okay. okay. So if you don't have one of those set up and you are the one making the decision, definitely connect to the individual that you're burying. You know, okay. when they want a whole thing. Some people don't even want funerals. Some people just want memorial services. Yeah. And I've seen families do that as well, where the family didn't even have a whole drawn out um, funeral. They did a cremation and just did a, memorial, a small memorial service. Okay. So these are conversations to your point though that we don't have. And okay. so we have to make these decisions emotionally and we have to make these decisions when it's a financial stress. And that's what makes it difficult. Yeah. So while we're having this conversation today is because as she was saying, we were just talking about this off camera, but we decided to bring it on because this is a bigger situation than just what we're talking about. People aren't having these conversations. No, we're not. And, and you know what? When we're having them, we're having them too late. Right. Right. And, right. and I've noticed that in the past couple of weeks, We've seen it happen in the news. We've seen it happen in our own families, in my own family. I've seen where people can't agree. Right. Um, and it's not that we don't love each other. It's because our feelings for that person that we love is so strong. And we, we know what they loved. We know what they liked. Right. We know what they wanted. But if it's spelled out. Right. And see, that's something I thought I had under control. And you're emotional. And what you have to understand yeah. about your emotions is that if you, you can't take your frustration out on death. Right. Oh. You know, Ooh. you can't be angry at death and mad at the situation Ooh, that you good. lost a loved one. That's and good. so every time something happens 
with somebody else, yeah. you blame them for something small mm. because your emotions are tied up because you can't blame the real thing that you're upset about. My God. So having a conversation ahead of time helps to work through those stressful moments. Look at God. See, this is the stuff y'all need to hear. I need to hear this because the one thing that we all know is we all got to leave here one day. We all will. And it's inevitable. It is. And the hard part is, is nobody wants to have these conversations. Y'all, let me show y'all what I'm doing. So Jeanette <laughs> has been scrambling her, her little eggs, y'all. I don't whip them she, up. She don't whip them up real good. But now, okay. let me let me show you what else we're going to put in our eggs. Y'all ready? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to do sausages cooking up mighty fine over there, too. Yep, sausages cooking up mighty fine and salad. All right, and so what we are going to do to make our scrambled eggs oh, in our wow. casserole really beautiful and fluffy is we're going to be adding heavy cream. Yes. Girl, y'all ain't live to you to have you some eggs with some heavy cream in it. Listen, I keep a thing of heavy cream in the house. Okay. All okay, right. Okay, now how much of this is you, you, you just eyeballing it? I eyeball it. I, okay. tell, I tell the spirits that to That looks like me. about a half a cup. Half a cup, yep. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks mm -hmm. like. Okay. So, and we're going to whip this up. We're going to whip and we're going to name it. <laughs> we're gonna I don't know about the name it. Name it. <laughs> we're going to whip it. We're going to name it. Okay? Oh, this gives it a really nice consistency. Yep. Now, if the spirits leave, you go ahead and put some more brown stone blends in there. Okay, I got you. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is just turning off the oven. I mean, turning off the stove. We don't need it. Sally has done her due diligence. I am still over here. Look, she letting the spit. She letting the ancestors leave her today with this brown stone. Yes. Beans, you see that? Look at that, girl. Ooh, that's so pretty. Ain't it pretty? Come on, eggs. Okay. So we have eight eggs that are in this bowl, mm -hmm. and we also have a half a cup of heavy cream that we have added to it. I am continuing to grate my potatoes because they didn't have any grated potatoes in the freezer section. I ain't seen nobody grate potatoes in years. <laughs> about this is manual y'all right. hear me hey Winnie how are you so listen we were uh again so we have learned a couple of things tonight with tips topics and talk on Sunday during what's for brunch first of all we want to always make sure that we have some type of plan in place right plan out have that conversation with our family members make sure that we're doing our due diligence now now I don't know if this is a conversation that we should even be having at this point but what about a trust? What is different between having a trust set up and um, letting everything be handled that way? Or um, if we want to have, say, for instance, just a burial, what's the difference? So you have a burial where you're actually going to the funeral and you're doing that. A trust is where you already have money kind of put aside ahead of time. Okay. Um, basically, like, you can even set up a trust, you know, when someone passes and um, they leave behind a trust for, like, okay. their minors and things okay. like that to help them kind of further on. They have trust in that aspect, too. So basically, you're just saving the money to use it a later date. Okay. Okay. Ideally, funeral costs is, on average, $10,000. Oh, God. So if you don't have life insurance or some kind of insurance or something like that, then that burden of that cost falls on the family. Okay. And so that's why when you're thinking about your own budget mm -hmm. and your own savings, mm -hmm. you always have to plan for what's almost like the unexpected. Yeah. So it's unexpected expenses that you have in your household or okay. your car or, okay. you know, your lifestyle. But then mm -hmm. there's unexpected expenses that may come up when you have family situations or issues okay. as well. Okay. Um, so that's the importance of really saving money, of keeping a budget, because mm -hmm. if anything was to happen to a family member and they don't have insurance, which insurance is the first Piece, right right but okay. if they don't then what happens next and that's really where you need to be prepared to make sure you can think of your family because then everything else gets crazy on top of that you're not prepared. right so let's talk about get crazy so i'm sitting here and i'm thinking i have several bank accounts i have several savings accounts jeanette mm -hmm. i also have um stocks i have bonds i have my 401k I've got money that's on stash, honey, and acorn. Not the girl. stash. Ma'am, let's talk about I got stuff on stash, girl. Don't play with me with my stash, honey. I got stuff in TD Ameritrade. Listen. Okay, stash. <laughs> so, 
what happens to my money? Am I supposed to set all of that up or am I to assume that the attorneys and everybody that's going to be handling my estate is going to do right by my family and give them that money? You need to make sure you set all that up. Lord you need to make goodness. sure that you have beneficiaries in place. Okay. You need to make sure if you do a will that you have it outlined mm -hmm. in your will who gets what. Okay. Because you can say, oh, this daughter, you get this. Yana. So you can decide who you want, but okay. you need to set up your account and set up beneficiaries. Okay. All of that stuff. Okay. Um, what I just had my mom do was basically she had savings accounts all over the place. Yeah. Um, because I taught her how to budget and, and do money when she was in her. Paul. Paul. Did y'all hear what she said? She taught her how to do what? Could you say that again? Jeanette? I taught my mom how to develop a budget and how to live off a budget in her fifties. She was a QVC fanatic. Oh, okay. Oh she spent God. all the money on QVC. It's okay to spend money on QVC. It's okay for you to spend money on anything. Mm -hmm. You just have to budget for that. So now right. she has a QVC budget. But in doing that, she found out different ways that you can get money for opening accounts. Okay. So she had like seven different bank accounts open. Because they gave her two hundred dollars here, three hundred dollars here, like Navy Federal did me. Okay, yes. <laughs> so she had all, and I'm like, hey, nobody's gonna know if you're not adding somebody either on the account. So if you okay. add somebody on the account with you, then that person has as a as as you know a partner. You know, it's you and your daughter and you and your son. That person has access to those funds. Okay. If you don't have anybody on there, nobody knows. Then your money could wind up with the state. Oh my god! Okay. And then your family be trying to get. They won't know about it. Oh well, okay. What? If you don't, if you don't, you know, put it. A lot of them will, you know, kind of send stuff. But if you, how are they going to know unless they receive a death certificate saying that something happened to you? Yeah. How would they know That's what true. has changed? That's so true. you have to prepare all that stuff and set that stuff up in advance. Okay. So I'm going to add two more eggs to this. Yes, ma'am. And then we are going to add our shredded potatoes and y'all gonna pray for me here i hope i got some shredded cheese in here oh my goodness <laughs> okay and then we're gonna bring sally over and we're going to put everything in sally and put sally in the oven okay so so to answer your question be proactive okay i would in your situation right now i would contact all of them yeah. and ask them what their procedures are related to it and then be proactive okay. if you need to set up a beneficiary. A lot of them, like your 401k, you have to add a, a beneficiary. Uh -huh. And a lot of them will send you beneficiary. But make sure you fill out that paperwork. Okay. Because some people don't fill it out. Okay. Um, so make sure you're filling out that paperwork to make sure you have a beneficiary and everybody add it to your stuff so that they can contact that individual. Okay. And same with any of your other stuff. But be as proactive as possible, especially since you know you have money in other places. And if your yes. family doesn't know and you want them to get those benefits, right. then be proactive about setting everything up so it's okay. prepared for them. And or including them in your will, okay. which is also a suggestion so that it's known okay okay and see that's stuff that i've always been kind of concerned about asking about like you know what am i supposed to do in this situation or that and and you know going through what we just did with my sibling with my sister my baby sister and also mm -hmm. with my cousin it, it's been an eye opener for me like do did i do enough did we do enough did i do enough on my part in terms of my family in terms of my children and right now what i'm hearing you say is, is no i haven't Okay. First step for you is, of course, contacting all of them to yeah. make sure you have it set up appropriately so that your family is either aware and or they have what they need to contact your family. Okay. The other thing I would suggest is the difficult part. You know this isn't a conversation that your family no. has never had. Mm -mm. So sometimes you have to be that person. Mm. And it's not an easy place to be. It's not even an uh, easy conversation to have. Yes. But somebody needs to have it. And because I in any situation, if anything happens, you're a part of everything that's happening afterwards. Yep. Guys, if you have never met Lisa Ann, this is Lisa, Lisa Ann. Ann. Okay? Y'all done met Roger. This is Roger. Roger has our potatoes on it. Lisa Ann is going to hold Sally. Okay? So that's what we're getting ready to do. Okay. We're going to get Sally and we're going to get uh, Sally to sit on Lisa Ann. So we have our sausage. So this is where I'm going to start sharing with you guys okay. um, what we're doing. 
and I'm going to just kind of spread this out. It's not a lot of sausage, right? This is a pork sausage. Guys, you can use any kind of sausage that you want. It's already seasoned. This is a pork sausage, okay? You can use beef. You can use a ground uh, veggie protein. You can even use um, seitan if you choose to do that, okay? But just make it where um, it's cooked completely through. And Jeanette, if you would be so yes. kind as to do the annals, pouring in the eggs. Yes, you're you ready. Pour in you ready? Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. That looks good. It's ready. creamy and Make ready sure to rock and roll. All of that out. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. Okay, now. The next step that we're going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this cheese. If you would like, you can kind of grab a couple of handfuls and we're just going to sprinkle this over top. What in the world? There we go. Sprinkle this a little bit on the top. You say you didn't know you had cheese. You had cheese? Yeah, man. I got the key cheese. KJ makes chaffles, y'all. I don't know if anybody knows what a chaffle is, but um, he literally takes one egg and a, and a half a cup of cheese. And he'll make a, um, a cheese waffle that is 100% keto friendly. Because oh, wow. he sees a personal trainer on Fridays. Okay. And so. Um, you want more cheese? Well, more cheese. Okay. More cheese. Bam. And so and this then... is about a cup and a half of cheese. Yep. So far. Yep. And then we're going to add, guys, I, I literally shredded just two potatoes. And y'all like, oh, that looks terrible. Uh-uh. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Watch this. Because it's been out and the oxygen has hit it, it's changing colors. That's why we got to hurry up and get it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Miss Jeanette is going to put some more cheese on top of that. I got you. Are we going to add some more of this blend? Yes, ma'am. We're going to add. We're going to add a little bit of this blend, but because we're putting the cheese on it, we want to be careful because we don't want it salty. We Got don't it. want it salty. Okay. So I, I'm always very careful with that. And then also the sausage is has um, salt in it. Has salt in it as well. So we want to be definitely careful. Even though I must admit the everyday blend is not as salty as I thought it was going to be for the kids, so I'm going to go with their with their love. And I want a big shout out to those people who have ordered it. You're sending me messages. You're sending me pictures of you using the blend. Um, I had a young lady reach out to me. Shout out to Brenda from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She uh, hit me up and told me that she's trying to change her diet. And she usually has sugar with her oatmeal in the morning. But she used the cinnamon blend. And it doesn't have a lot of sugar on it in, on purpose. Right? So what, what we're doing, the, now the next step is, is we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. You see that? This is it. This is our casserole. Super easy. Y'all can do this in the evening. This is, you know how sometimes you have breakfast for dinner? Well, honey, that's what this is. We're getting ready to carry on. Want to put a little bit more on there? This is, again, the Brownstone Blends Everyday Blend that she's shaking on here while we talk about your money. Is that good? Yep, that's okay. good. Now, I'm going to tell you what I do because the holes in this are so small to me with the herbs and stuff that's in here is I take the top off, honey, and, and I fill it up. Yep, and then it. I do it. Yeah, so and I'll I just... wash it because I have dry it. Oh, okay. So and I just put a little bit on there. I just want to be real super careful, but I want those potatoes to have some flavor too. And then there you go. Hi, Cara. Good to see you. So I'm going to go ahead and take Sally off of Lisa Ann, and we are going to put her in the oven while we keep talking about your money. Okay. Take and how long? How long are you gonna cook it? Oh, look at that pie! As a matter of fact, it's overcooked, and it's at the bottom, so it's gonna smoke, and that's okay. Here's what we're gonna do. And I forgot about that. I should have put it on a um, pan. I should have put it on a pan. I forgot that it was gonna over bubble. See so y'all? Good though. I want y'all to see. What is this? Hot. That is super hot. Um, right there. Yes. Oh, I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. It is absolutely gorgeous. I want y'all to see our biscuit apple pie. There we go. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Look at that. That looks good. Y'all see that? Yum. And guess what we forgot to do? I forgot to do the egg wash. You don't even need it. Look at that. That is gorgeous. 
That is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Look at that. So what is the, what's the egg wash? You just do the egg white? Yep. And put it on top? Put it on top and put it in the oven, but you don't even need it. No, that. it doesn't. Uh-uh. That is beautiful. Now what we can do is we can take a little bit more of the brownstone blends, um, cinnamon sugar nutmeg blend and put over top. Like like so like that. Like so <laughs> like that. <laughs> and there you go. You're good to go. So we're we're talking about money today, and I want to get back to that. So um my my other question is, and I heard you say something. Uh oh. I heard you say something about your mom. Your mm -hmm. mom has several accounts. Would you say that it is always in our best interest to have more than one account? Would that be so pushing? Yes. What I suggest to my clients is at least a bill account and um, what I call a play account or a fine okay. account. And the reason I suggest that is for multiple reasons. One, the biggest reason is because in working in the banking industry, um, I used to have to do those fraud, what is called a fraud affidavit. Where people, where people go to buy gas, they put their credit card in there and their card number gets swiped from those scanners. Or they go into a restaurant, same thing can happen. So when you have your debit card or your card linked to your bank account, if your bills come out of that and somebody pulls oh my. all your money out and your bills come in, if you have automatic drafts, they bounce and, and, and or you don't have money to pay your mortgage, okay. it just becomes a nightmare. Okay. So I have, um, what I suggest is at least two accounts where you separate those two so okay. nothing comes out of your bill account but bills. Okay. So you're not swiping that card okay. at all these random places. Okay. And then I have a card that I swipe random places. Okay. Because I put a set amount in there. Okay. If they take that money, okay, you know, it's not gonna prevent me from being able to pay my bills. Okay. It's not gonna stop me. My stuff isn't gonna overdraw, it isn't gonna bounce because I strictly use that to eat out or to buy gas or where I'm randomly using okay. that card if it gets um, swipe and mm -hmm. I need to defraud all my money. They're only taking some of my money. I like that. I don't know why I never thought about that. Now I have several accounts. I just kind of pull from where, okay, let me check the balance on this one. Okay. I'm good. All right. I know I'm not touching that one. Okay. No, 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 no. Maybe I'll just take $10 out. I'm yeah. like that. So it should be an actual it should be designated intentional. Got Whatever it. your intentional is, right? Uh -huh. I say that because of the experience that I had in years of having to help people and seeing those issues and situations happen so many times. Yep. That's where I kind of came up with a system to alleviate and where it alleviates that pain point. So whatever your intention is, though, if you have certain stuff set up for a particular reason, just make sure you're intentional about why you have it set up the way you have it Got set it. up. And to be mindful of if you're doing a budget and you're trying to stick to your budget and trying to stay consistent with it, you have to know where all your money is. It's okay. hard to do that if you have four, five, six accounts everywhere and you got money all over the place mm -hmm. and you're paying bills. Like you said, take 10 from here, 10 from here. Well, what does your budget look like? Oh, I just got called out, y'all. Did y'all <laughs> see that? I just got called out. Oh my God! Do I need to schedule a call, session with you? All we, we need to, we need to, yeah, girl. Oh, <laughs> because then that means you don't know. Oh, oh, hey Brenda, what are the thoughts on digital wallet? Is that separate from a main account? So you can do a digital wallet. You mean like, um, let me clarify, like Apple Pay or something like that. Apple Card has like a digital thing, and then you can do a digital wallet on your phone where you can add mm -hmm. your stuff to that. Um, I would be cautious with any of that stuff that's digital. Oh, snap. Even those um, <laughs> QR codes, you know how you can uh, scan the QR codes? Yeah. A fraud people are putting their fraud information on those QR codes. And so when you're scanning it, they're getting your information that way too. So if you have a digital wallet, they're getting your digital information that's tied to your phone. What? Yep. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. New herbs is new information. So you know how you have those, you go to restaurants are really big with it right now yeah. because it alleviates them having regular menus. Right. They're giving you a QR code. Right. So fraud people are putting their information over those QR codes. <gasps> and no. so when you scan it, you're giving them access to your phone and stuff that way. And so if you have a digital card yeah. on, in your digital wallet in your phone, you have the wallet thing set up, then they have access to that information. Let me tell y'all what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to cook this on top of the oven. Cause of the um Yeah, y'all that sugar to start smoking. So and it's okay, because guess yeah. what? It's almost done now. 
Yeah, so I would say definitely be careful because I did a lot of, in my banking experience, I did a lot of fraud affidavits and fraud prevention, mm -hmm. and I had to work with what we called um, special operations for different stuff. So it's just a lot when you as a customer or consumer have to go through all the different situations mm -hmm. that somebody can put you in because they're trying to commit fraud. So I would just say be cautious of any of those things and be cautious of where you use your card and different things like that. Oh, y'all, y'all can have straight. access to your information, girl, and that's scary. It's convenient, and that's the reason it right. exists, and right. that's the reason it was created, right? But convenience, keep in mind how much of your stuff they have access to for convenience. That is crazy, and you know what? You don't think about that. I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually use Apple Pay. But I only use it. Okay, here's my truth moment. And my it's nothing wrong with Apple Pay. And if you need to dispute something, there's a dispute process. So okay. it's not that it's bad. It's okay. just that you be cautious where you use it and uh -huh. know that something could happen. Just be aware okay. of situations. That's okay. Like, where we just say, oh, it's convenient. Let me just tap and pay. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you can just tap and pay for convenience, that means somebody else can get your information if they're stuck. Because they online. tap it too. Yeah. So Ooh, like yeah. gas stations have those scanners where yep. literally they put that little piece on the front of it. And, and that's how they Let get me tell you. So y'all, true story. This really happened. Then I have a truth moment. I, about four years ago, I was at the Kroger over here. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? Off of Taylor Street? Off of Taylor Street. So I was on, I was coming home from work, swiped my car. And this is no lie. Within 24 hours, I had a zero balance on that card. They took everything you got. They took everything I had on that card. Now, I had to call and dispute it. Hi, Rick. How are you? I had to call and dispute. And I also had to wait 10 days for the money to get back on the card. Because you had to file a fraud affidavit. I, yep. They have to go and do an investigation. Yep. And let me tell you. Sometimes they don't always give you your money back. Shut the front door. Are you serious? Sometimes if they can't prove it or if it's something with it, they don't always give you your money back. Really? Even after 10 days. And keep in mind, that's why I said the separate accounts, because in 10 days, you know how much stuff could bounce in your household in oh 10 days? Oh, my God. You keep in mind, kidding. I just said seven out of 10 people don't even have a thousand dollars saved. Right. So that means seven people out of the 10 people that you know yeah. cannot survive 10 days. Without, without. y'all heard it first, right? Did you hear this? Seven so, people out of ten people, that, and this is pre-pandemic, right? What's Ooh. the numbers? What is it now? I don't. I have to research what it is now. So when uh -huh. I did a, a lot of presentations on it right before the pandemic, that's what it was. Oh and of my. course, the numbers are still spiraling because mm -hmm. we're back and forth with the pandemic. Yeah. So this was pre before everything kind of got to the point uh -huh. we, we're only still really in pandemic we are obviously. we so absolutely the numbers are still are. shifting yeah seven people out of ten people that you know if you count down the line can't even survive Child, listen you know what that that's that's a mess and you know what i forgot to do i forgot to tag you we finna tag you man <laughs> uh-uh you ain't getting off that easy I'm not getting off that easy. you are not bam done so what are the other things that i wanted to ask you since you are here first of all guys you said you had a truth moment what i do truth? so my truth moment is is that that was the day that i realized that i could no longer do one card one account right i i knew that i had i had messed up Right. Like like the TikTok says, at that moment, she knew that she had up, uh, right? And it's unfortunate because we're, if you go back, we're taught have one, you know, either no bank account yep. or one bank account. Yep. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that's what that's we're taught, truth. but it's the reality that we live in. Yep. So, guys, if you're just now joining us, first of all, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is What's for Brunch, Tips, Topics, and Top Edition with your girl, Paulette, the owner and founder of Brownstone Worldwide and host of the syndicated radio show, The Sunday Brunch. But today I have a good friend with me from, I hate to say it, no, I don't, from the mastermind. <laughs> She is bringing the fire. She's bringing the knowledge to us, y'all. And she's letting us know the basics on what we need to do to, first of all, prepare for, you know, the inevitable. 
So right. death planning and what that looks like. Uh, some of the basics, we have some people that have asked some questions and we brought those to the table for you guys. Um, like digital wallets, what is that all about? How can we use it? How can we protect ourselves? How many accounts do we really need? So these are a couple of things. Can you kind of recap what we talked about just a little bit, if you don't mind? So right, having a savings plan, setting mm -hmm. up your savings plan, making sure that you have a budget. I know everybody has different ways of doing a budget. Some use paper, some use a book, some use it. Um, electronically with an Excel spreadsheet, but the goal is for you to have some way of tracking your money in and out. It's difficult for you to plan for the future and difficult for you to really know where your numbers are if you don't have a budget. Yeah. You don't know what's coming in and you don't know what's going out. doesn't matter how much you make. I, I work with people that make a good bit of money but still struggle because they're still above their means with that money. Ooh, so oh, it doesn't it. matter if you make um, $10,000 or $100,000. If you're over utilizing your money, you're still over utilizing. Does, it doesn't matter about the dollar amount. So I work with people in both places of it. Right, right. Um, making sure that your family planning, like like she was saying, making sure you're setting up for either having some form of life insurance or having some form of savings to be able to have an emergency fund. If anything does happen to your family, you're prepared. Making sure you have your regular savings plan, at least a thousand dollars for emergencies and three to six months of your actual income saved for emergencies. So okay. here's the reality. If you're ever laid off from work, if you ever get sick and have to be out from work, your bills are still coming every month. They sure are. That amount is still going to be need to be paid. How are you going to do that? And so just making sure that you're setting yourself up for financial future, having discussions with your family about your, your death plan. Basically, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about the inevitable. But it's a must in this day and time. If COVID hasn't taught us anything, yep. it's the fact that no day is promised. Mm. And so with that, are you prepared? And is your family prepared for what that looks like as well? Um, even fraud situations, how many bank accounts do you need to have? And so ideally you have to determine what that looks like for you. I gave a suggestion, but each person's situation is gonna be different. So you could have one, you could have two, you could have three. I would say just make sure it's something that you can still keep a hold on. You know what's going in it, you know what's coming out of it. Because I even seen several situations where people were paying subscriptions mm -hmm. for years and didn't know it. Ooh, I'm one. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Twenty nine ninety nine, thirty nine ninety nine every month for a year, and not even know because you never even looked at your bank statement. Okay, so we have another question. You mentioned yes. different accounts, same or different banks as well. I suggest different banks. Ooh, why is that? I suggest different banks because if you ever need to do loans or anything like that, you already have an established relationship with that bank. So like, per, for instance, a credit union, uh -huh. or you might have one that's more, um, I call it like Wells Fargo Bank of America. I'm just naming those because they have a lot of locations. Right. So depending on where you are, for you to be able to get access to them. Right. Um, and then maybe a credit union account or something like that, or um, one that you can utilize for loans if you need in the future, you already have an established relationship. Right. So I would say different ones. And it keeps it, you know, so your stuff is separate. Okay. But again, that's a personal choice. You could do the same one. I suggest it being a different one. Okay. And so um, for those of you all who are here and you're, you're tossing those questions out, Jeanette, Tell them about your background, girl. Why are you the expert? <laughs> so, <laughs> why am I the expert? So, the reason that I do this, so let, let me talk about that more so than also I'm the expert because I've been in the financial industry. I worked in the financial industry for about 15 years. I did several different roles. I worked for large banking institutions like Regions Banks, Bank of America, Blue Cross and Blue Shield Credit Union. And so I held different positions in each one of those banks. And I saw different things um, on how money was really utilized. Mm -hmm. The gap that I saw is the difference in our community and our culture on how we utilize money and our mindset of how we utilize even our credit and loans and, mm -hmm. and how other cultures. I, I seen how other cultures came to the bank, borrowed $100,000. Come on, talk about at it. At 0% interest. Woo! bought houses, built businesses, <laughs> paid that loan off and doubled and tripled their money. My, 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 While my. with us, we always struggle to even pay back $2,000 and have a 30% interest rate on loans and cards and things. Wow. So with that, you know, 
as I kind of spiral on to learning more about money and learning more about behavior, and that's really where I focus on a lot of my clients is more behaviors, habits, and making sure that you're set up for a good financial future is my goal. Okay. And that's where I started my organization called The Cultivated Seed. We help our community and culture in the area of personal finance. And then that's also where um, I would became certified through Dave, Dave Ramsey's course, actually, as a certified financial coach. Okay. And so as a certified financial coach, yes. what do I expect from you? As a certified financial coach from me, it's definitely the accountability. That's the biggest piece. Um, I think the most important thing that I try to do with my clients is opening their eyes for things that they didn't see or didn't notice before. So like we're having this conversation, you're like, oh, oh, I'm oh. serious. I thought I didn't know. I'm like, I thought I had it going on. <laughs> That's where I feel like my expertise is, is really digging in to see where that situation is understanding where they want to go and then helping them achieve those goals through accountability okay. and walking through those process in mm -hmm. addition to i'm not the products and service person i've done all rounds of products and service even down to i've done life insurance but i want to focus on really changing the behaviors and the narrative because once we can change the behaviors and the narrative in our current community then we can help the generations behind us yes. have a better financial future so once i teach people today like we're talking about budgets you can teach your children and they can teach yes. their children. Yes. I think that's what my organization really wants to do long term is change the narrative. For the, I think it's a generational curse, honestly, because we've never had these conversations about money. We don't talk about it. And because we we perish for lack of knowledge. That's just Ooh, Come on now. And so beginning today, yes, as a, a word of advice to the audience that is listening and watching and those who will be following behind, what would be the first thing based on our conversation today? Because let me tell you something. This conversation is so heavy and so deep. You know you're going to have to come back. I am. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> That's first. I got you. So we can, we can we'll do a full course boom. bill. Right. You we got this. Yes. A full yes. course Girl, bill. Listen, yes. We can pull out the wine. Listen, we can do, you know, a whole full course, course bill. I'm with you. Yes. And we need to definitely have these conversations. First of all, I appreciate you stopping by and speaking to the audience in reference to money and, and what we have going on because at the end of the day you know we can love our lives my y'all know my mantra love live breathe right but it's hard to do when you're worried about how you're gonna keep your life when you're home. struggling right it's, when you're struggling and we don't talk about the struggle right. we don't we don't talk about the struggle and we don't and once we've been through the struggle because Yes, I'm a certified financial coach, but I've faced foreclosure. Yeah. I've struggled through a divorce and had mm -hmm. to continue paying bills. Mm -hmm. So I also had to learn how to survive. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference in that. But we don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We don't. And so that's where I feel like I can relate to people because it's not just about my financial knowledge or background. It's about, hey, I've been through right. all of the above right. when it comes to finances. Yep. And I know, like I said, I didn't put my, my, my mom didn't have a budget until she was in her 50s. Mm -hmm. So imagine how I grew up, yeah. you know, if she didn't even kind of have a, a budget right. or really know these ideas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it. I just went into the banking industry at an early age. I went into it at 18. And so I just learned from my experiences mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. But we don't talk about those things. Gosh, I wish we. So, OK, I'm going to stop saying wish. So you are going to be one of those people that are going to empower us and give us the strength to do, overcome. to overcome those bad, not bad decisions, but the decisions that we think are the best, we can do better. Right. To shine light on those things. Okay. To get, because sometimes some decisions are warranted uh -huh. and you make those decisions in the moment sometimes for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's a horrible decision. It means that, okay, you made that decision. Let's learn from it. Let's grow from it and let's move forward. Move what do you want to do next? Because remember, it's only two ways with money. You either reduce what you're paying or you increase your income. It's, Can it's you say that again? You right. either reduce what you're paying. Okay or you increase your income. Mm. It's, it's not, you know, one or two ways. The challenge is the budget piece is not there with a lot of the people when okay. I first start out. Okay. So you don't know that you're drowning. Mm. You know that you haven't struggled paying bills. You know that you're challenged in where your money is going, but you don't really understand why. Oh my.
And so the first thing that you would do, take me through, okay, so if I were to take your course or if I were to hire you to work with me to get my entire financial life together, mm -hmm. the first thing that you would have me do is to write down all my bills and what's That's coming crazy. in and what's going out. Am I right? Let's face your reality. Oh what's my God. In, what's going out? Where's your money going? Oh, how many months? I'm going to suggest I even... Can we cut this? Oh, can we reduce this? Can we change this? Now, keep in mind, this is all based on your goals. Okay. That you want, you may want to build a business. Mm -hmm. You may want to improve your credit. Mm -hmm. You may want to pay for your child's college. Mm -hmm. You may want to pay for something for yourself. And there's always going to be a sacrifice in that. Okay. So with that sacrifice, we have to have a conversation. How bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. I went without cable for three years. Wow. Okay, wait a minute. No wait. cable. <laughs> three years. Are you serious? How did you do that? I couldn't afford it. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, I could, but I would be drowning every single month. Okay. So, so, and here's another truth moment. Um, because I have an adult child that lives with me, she is responsible for a portion of that. So, right. you know, we have an agreement. Hey, you're going to take care of this. I'll take care of the big stuff. Right. So that is helpful. That's how come I can't sit here and judge anybody. So let me take that back because you couldn't afford it. To be honest with you, if it were just me. If you had to pay it all. Girl, uh, in that around. situation yeah. and in that moment, you know, after I went ah. through my divorce and all that, yeah, at, at that period in time, it wasn't a necessity. Because here's the thing. There's wants and there needs. I need a roof over my head. Correct. I need food. Yep. I need a car or gas to get back and forth to work. Right. Do I need cable? So I need Wi-Fi. <laughs> you need Wi-Fi or you need something yeah. to or Wi-Fi for the right. Hey, yeah, Chica, how are you? What you're doing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so to that, I need my Wi-Fi because I run a business from home. Not only that, but I still have my nine to five. So that is a, an expense that I have to have. And I actually write that off. At the end right. Of the year. Because it's a business yes. expense. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And, and that's why we have Wi-Fi. Now, I have Netflix. I don't have Hulu. But I have Netflix. I also have Prime. And I have, what is it, Amazon? That shows you how much Amazon. I don't watch it. And see, those are subscriptions. So, so it's like, oh, I'm just paying, you know, this per month. Or how much are you paying a year? How much are you paying you two years? Talk about how it. much could could that have gone to something else? And so these are conversations that we have. In the end, your finances are your responsibility. Right. I'm just there to help you open your eyes and understand where you are and where you want to be. Okay. And if there's some places where you can shift some things, I'll bring those to life. Okay. Ultimately, it's your decision. You are correct about that. But it's if, if it's a hot mess, see, it, see, here's where I think I would... I'm flipping out because you sit down and you have people face the no. ugly truth. Because sometimes it's ugly. Yeah. Sometimes. Like you're saying, okay, you got this, you got that, but how much are you putting into it? How much? Is it, how much bills? How many? How much money? And I'm, this is Paulette mentally going through her head while you're having this conversation with everybody. Paulette is talking to herself and she's saying, okay, how much is my mortgage? What's this? What's that? What's that? What's that? I don't have a car note. I own my car. And people can say that they want to, but I'm going to ride that bad boy till the, the, til the wheels fall off. And that, is, that is suggested. Why yes. don't we get a whole nother car note? And yeah. we get those things because we want them. And in some situations, you may need a new car. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a right or wrong. Right. I won't say that. It's an eye-opening experience as far as where you want to get to, where you are, and what you need to do to get to those places and willing to make the sacrifice. It's not, I don't do it in a way of, you don't need to pay cable. I use that as an example because right. I've worked with somebody that paid $320 for um, sports channels, but they wanted to buy a house because they were renting. So you won't have to, bro, like... Yeah, we, you know, yeah. We have, we, you know it's fine. Then you, you just may be renting it a little longer because yeah. that three hundred something dollars a month adds up over right. a year if you want to you know have money for your closing costs. Okay. What you going to do? What you going to do? Right. Exactly. At the end of the day, what you going to do? <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, um, first of all, thank you for coming. You are. And I appreciate you for swinging through. First of all, y'all, this mastermind, lovely, decided to swing through to see how I was doing after. Um, bereavement in my family. So I thought that that was really super sweet. But then we get to, we got to talk about the money aspect, honey, and we got to talk about death benefits and all this other stuff. And I thought, wait a minute. Let's go 
go live. Let's go live. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it because she is an expert. I've hung out with this sister before. We've been to TSP Game Plan together before. First of all, shout out to Lamar Tyler and Ronnie Tyler, husband and wife team, who are behind TSP, profit, Traffic Sales and Profit with Lamar Tyler. Um, an amazing, an amazing group of people. I would encourage you, just like we have learned, you got to get in the room so that you can get connected to the people that are um, moving and grooving and doing the things that you want to do because your network is your what? Your network. net worth. And that's what I'm learning in, in being a part of that. So enough of that. We got a whole pie, pie right here. Listen, and I believe it's calling KJ's name. What you think? I see, don't know I, about KJ, but you just said it right here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh, KJ. KJ. I haven't even seen KJ since we've been in this kitchen. KJ. <laughs> that's how. <I> <laughs> Let's let's get y'all to try a little bit. Of this. I don't know where he at, but he's so, on the middle one. Yeah. All right, so here yeah. comes Amina. So y'all, here's what we're gonna do. Too. She gonna get some too. Let me, let me mm -hmm. That's right up her alley, honey. She loves the camera. She's she yeah, she's she doing the camera. Yes. 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 So listen. Yes. Yes. We are going to cut. So guys, for those of you all who are not aware, first of all, I'm gonna do this one last time so that you are aware. This is What's for Brunch. I am the owner and founder of Browstow Worldwide. It's your girl, Paulette. This is the owner and founder of The Cultivated Seed. She, Miss Jeanette Barnett, is a uh, certified financial coach. financial coach. And she has been hanging out with us today. Um, I don't know if you knew you were going live. I did. I did not know. <laughs> but it was, it was worth it. Improv, but it was really good. Yeah. And this is a so lot of good you. information. Um, here's what I am going to do. For those of you all who are not familiar with what we do at the Brownstone Center, one of the things that we do is something called Tips, Topics, and Talk. Tips, Topics, and Talk is also a part of Brownstone Living, the newsletter. I am going to get Miss Jeanette to get all of this juicy information that she provided to us, and we're going to put it in the next Brownstone Living newsletter, which actually comes out on Wednesday of this week. That's April 13th. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to get a lovely picture of her, and she's going to put down all the information that you guys missed or maybe you want to go over or review. And I think it's really important for you guys to get this information and do something with it because, like Jeanette was saying, one of the things that's super important is planning, budgeting, facing your financial situation, where it's currently at, so you can make a better decision on what you want to do long term, whether it's purchasing a house, whether it's whatever. And look business. at that, starting a business, and just like that, couponing with Star. I'm a coupon fanatic. Is couponing a good thing? You know, so those are the yeah. things I definitely want to share with you all. But y'all, I don't want this to get too cool. And I would just add one thing because I don't know yes, if you knew it, but April oh. is Financial Literacy Month. Look at so that. So this was perfect. What? On time, even though we didn't plan this, we were no. literally just making a pie. It was perfect for this because you know, so this is a good time for everybody if you haven't paid close attention yes. to your finances and or making sure you set your fi your finances up for your family for the future. Right. It's the perfect time and to do it to bring Absolutely. awareness to those things. Absolutely. So you guys have heard it first. We're getting ready to try this pie. Um, so let me just show it to y'all one more time. Beautiful ceramic pie dish this is not aluminum this is not something i picked up at the dollar store real quick because i didn't even make a pie nice this is the real thing okay and this is actually the last one that we had in the store and i was like nope i'm taking it home now this is believe it or not cooked apples with the brownstone um brownstone blends cinnamon nutmeg and sugar blend that's actually the everyday and also we had to cook some cookies i uh, cook some cookies we had to cook some apples with the same blend and a touch of butter. Then, of course, guess what happened? The oven was full of the sugar and it started smoking. And that was a hot mess. But anyway, so let's carry on and let's cut into this. No, and go get KJ, because I want him to taste this. He's in the tub. He's what? He's in the tub. Oh, that's right. He did do a lot of work today. He's in the tub. So we're going to cut this. She's like, but I'm right here. So y'all, this is biscuit, though. I want y'all to recognize this is biscuit darn dough okay look at that and it's the the triple layers is what it is it's triple layers y'all see i'm just cutting 
And it's almost, to be honest with y'all, it's almost. Uh oh. You like apple pie? Yes. It's almost like. It's almost like a cobbler. Is what this yeah, reminds me. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. The way Kind of flaky. Yep, and it's flaky, so this is biscuit dough. What you want to always do is make sure I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna cut it small because it looks like it might need a little bit more time. Hey, cousin, how are you? So, we're gonna cut just a little bit, yeah. So, we're it definitely could have stood to, but we'll just oh my gosh, we'll just taste a little bit and we'll cut a piece here and then I'll put the rest because I definitely want to try Amina let's see how it is. yeah and then I'll put the rest back so let's let's grab you a fork and you don't have to eat all of it Amina let's get two the fork oh I don't like the I like the fork with a good weight on it get your dessert fork Ready? Yeah. Try this a little bit. You ready? Go ahead. Oh, she just gone. Okay, wait a minute. I know what I'm gonna do. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay, huh? I'm gonna cut it for you. Okay, so take that piece and the apple right there. Yeah. There. That's all yeah. y'all. Hey, Bishop Nash. How are you? That's good. Mm -hmm. good. I can taste apple. Is good. it good? It looks That's good. the only face we can see is yours. Mm -hmm. You big here, rascal. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thoughts. That is good. Okay, so we, we are good to go. I'm you like it? It tastes good. I kind of like it, but I want to stay in a little longer. You want to stay in a little she longer? Wants, she wants Jeanette to stay. <laughs> Miss Jeanette has a whole life outside of here. I don't know why little kids just think people just supposed to stop and just live their life with it. So this is almost like a cobbler, y'all. So we have like the cinnamon, we have the, the drips of butter, we have the cooked apples. You got it? You and it is, apples? You got some apple right there. it literally is like a cobbler. It's like an mm -hmm. apple cobbler. It really is. So there we go. I'm going to have to take a slice of this home with me. Girl, listen. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm going to do is we're going to keep it warm. Oh, you have sausage still in there? Mm hmm. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Now. This is so No. This thing doesn't expand. It's so tough. You can't even put top. I can't even put top at home. Um, it's alright. Ooh, baby. Yes, it's good. You gonna put a pan so it don't fill again? I should. You gotta make the apple pie. Up again. See, this is when we get to have fun. You know, one thing that I don't like about um, the one thing that I don't like about Facebook, even though I like Facebook, is I can't play the music I want. Because, honey, I would be up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I thought you were going to block me earlier. Okay. I was like, how's she playing music? What? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey. It told me, and I always play music, but right. it don't only mess with me on certain stuff. Right. And it came up like it's going to be blocked in 265, and then it was like, oh, the person will draw it. I guess it was so low. Right. Normally, if you play it kind of low, they don't bother They don't bother you. Right. So, we have had. That was a cobbler, y'all. That was an absolute cobbler. Listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you video and pictures. All you have to do is follow me on my Facebook reels of the sausage casserole that is currently in the oven. We have decided to go ahead and put the apple cobbler, because that's what it is, back in the oven and let, let the crust get a little bit crispier on the outside. Um, and then we are going to uh, get some photos and some pictures for you guys so you can see this later. Here's what I want you to do. If you are interested in getting the Brownstone Blends um, starter pack, it comes with four different blends, y'all. This is what comes in your starter pack. Are you ready? You get the everyday blend. You get this, the garlic lemon pepper blend. And y'all, I use it, honey. This but is the garlic, everyday. Uh -huh, that's everyday. Garlic lemon pepper right here. And this is the turmeric jerk, which is amazing on chicken thighs. 
Okay, don't ask me why I said that, but it's the truth. <laughs> and then um, this one, this is actually my sample one that I got first. This is the cinnamon sugar nutmeg blend. Okay, here's what I will tell you. What I will tell you is, is it comes with four of these and it also comes with four recipe cards that you can try the recipes with. It also comes with a brownstone blend starter pack, brownstone living and essentials um, oven mitt set with towels. So it's an entire four thing set. So you get two towels, you get one drying towel, you get um, two mitts, you get, no, you get one hand mitt and you get two pot holders. And it's all gonna be in your cute little box. Oh, so it's, a whole kit. it's a whole kit for awesome. you to really enjoy yourself. Right now, what I am going to tell you is we are running a special and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in chat so you guys can see it. Hey Ro, how are you? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in chat. Hang on, just what time are? Ah, here's a question. Okay. What are your thoughts on bank cards like Chime? Hey Kimberly, how are you? What are your thoughts on bank Chime? Yeah. yeah. Chime, I'm not familiar with. I would have to research that one a little more to mm -hmm. give a whole perspective on whether or not it's good or not mm -hmm. so i don't want to advise until i really look into that deeper. okay okay um, i've heard of it but i haven't really researched it okay um, um a lot let's see so um that'll that'll be something we'll, we'll look into so i will look into it and then i can i can just respond back okay once um i have a deeper perspective of it okay cool see and she's honest enough to say hey i'll do the research for you and i'll get back with you that is what you call somebody that cares about you. So definitely keep that in mind. Because it could be beneficial. So many new yeah. things and so much stuff that's out right now. That now I don't want to say, a a do this, but no. Now, there are a lot of people that I know that have Chime. Um, and they and it's a bank account is what it is, but right. it's all digital. Like, you can't go into a bank and, like, do transactions and stuff. Mm -hmm. People use it to get their paychecks earlier. They use it to transfer. But products. I haven't really looked up, like, whether or not there's a lot of fraud associated with it, whether or not mm -hmm. it's beneficial mm -hmm. for people in certain situations. So that's not, like, when I say yes, use it, or no, not to, I normally look at right. a whole perspective uh -huh. more than just, hey, this uh -huh. is what it is. Because, okay. Yeah. You know, that's what I really want to learn. Like, okay. you know, is a lot of fraud associated with it? Does what does the company look like? You know, ah, as far as yeah. how long they've been in business and any um, frequent issues, so things like that. Okay, I got you. Now that makes sense. Listen, folks, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to add another ticker for you guys. We thank you, 2022. Okay. We thank you 2022 is all you need to get 20% off of your Brownstone Living Blends start. Your blends packet, because we're adding additional spice blends to this, right? So you definitely want to get your, your take on it now. You're getting 20% off for the entire month of April because this is Customer Appreciation Month. Go to mybrownstoneliving.com. And you're going to search for those blends. It's at the very, very top. You can't miss it. And when you tap on it and you check out, you're going to get 20% off this starter pack bundle. And that I don't care what anybody says. It's really, honestly, you want the truth. It's a $70 value. And we're giving it to you for the low, low. And then we're going to turn around. We, we put 20%. a discount on it. And then we're giving you another 20% on top of that. Okay. For joining us today. For joining us today. Hallelujah. <laughs> How about that? Here's what we're going to do. Are there any last words that you have for our for our viewing audience? Make sure you have a budget. Oh God! Are you turning? Yeah. <laughs> and if it, it needs to be somebody to have that difficult conversation yeah. with your family to make sure that y'all set up for any situation, yeah. it's okay for that person to be you. Okay, and y'all heard it first. I really enjoyed this today. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us today. Kim Gordon, Bishop Nash, Chika Ugorji, Dr. Chika Ugorji has joined us. Hi, Stacy, thank you so much for joining us today. We are wrapping it up. Y'all, just so that you are fully aware, Miss Jeanette Barnett with the Cultivated Seed came to hang out with me today. We started talking about money. We went live. I go live on Sundays anyway, so this was actually very perfect and fitting because we're talking about money. Because of this, Miss Cultivated Seed is going to be the hot topic on Wednesday's newsletter. If you want a copy of the 
newsletter, go ahead over to mybrownstoneliving.com and you're going to enter in your email address, right? And then once you do that, you're going to get the upcoming newsletter, which is filled with what? Tips, topics, and talk. The big one this month, is financial literacy. So you guys don't want to miss that. It's absolutely free to subscribe to that. And I appreciate all of you all who have. I hope that you enjoyed the last one that we did. Now, here's what we <laughs> I love it too, Miss Stacy. She's like, yes, we in the same room. Wait a minute, can we do it but one time? Um for the TSP mastermind y'all for Who those said that stacy yes she said hey, i love stacy. it hey, <laughs> so y'all listen orange orange is in the building right here i'm feeling like lamar team time. Orange, team no, orange. we got the juice we no, got the juice okay we got the juice hey juice juice we got juice, juice for real okay. in, the <laughs> in, the, in the refrigerator for real for real y'all this has been so much fun but you all know what i like to do you all know monday wednesday and friday i'll be back 7 p.m. with tips, topics, and talk, and also the day shift, which airs on KCCR Radio Brownstone Center. What does that mean? Download the KCCR My Brownstone Living app so you can listen in. We've got the hot lunch mix. We've got the day shift with me, which is going to give you news and information that you can use. I actually broadcast it video live while it's broadcasting live on KCCR at the same time. So here's what I want you all to do. Three things. Are you ready? Love your life. Live your life to the fullest because you only have one. And breathe through every single moment. Love, live, breathe. I will see you all on Monday night and also tomorrow. Y'all, get this newsletter because she going to be in there giving y'all all the tea on the coins. All the juice. All, all the, the juice. juice. <laughs> she got the juice. Juice. Anyway, let me stop. You guys, it's been real. We're getting ready to have some of this casserole. We're going to share videos and things with you guys on Reels. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.